Have you been having problems with 4K discs skipping and freezing when you try to play them on your Sony 4K players? Well, today I have a bit of a life hack for you in the form of a simple settings tweak that will fix this problem. So let's rock it. Hi everyone, welcome back, I'm Fuzz. Uh, so I know there are quite a few people out there who have had problems with 4K discs skipping and freezing uh, when they're playing them on their Sony X700 or X800 4K players. And today I wanna offer a pretty simple solution, a, a couple settings that you can use that I think are likely to solve most of the problems you've been having with the player. Provided, of course, that we're not talking about an issue with the disc itself, where the disc needs to be cleaned or something. Now, I briefly touched on this issue in a previous Back to Basics video I made a few months ago uh, about why new 4K discs are skipping and freezing. So you can kind of view this video as an extension of or a companion to that video. And I will put a link to that video in the description as well, uh, because I do think there's some really good information in that video uh, about some of the problems we've been seeing with new 4K discs uh, straight from the factory. But that video was also focused a lot more on caring for the disc, on quality control issues, and a lot less on the 4K players themselves. But I am aware that there are Sony users out there who have encountered problems playing their 4K discs sometimes, in spite of the disc being you know, clean and in really good shape. So I wanted to dedicate a, a whole video to this aspect of the skipping and freezing issue. Uh, that is, as it relates to Sony 4K players specifically, uh, I want to recommend a couple settings tweaks that I think will prevent these issues from occurring. And again, that's presuming the disc is clean and free of anything that could cause problems uh, during playback, like debris or scratches or fingerprints or smudges or whatnot. Essentially, it's an easy fix that I just don't think a lot of people are aware of. Uh, so they tend to assume that Sony 4K players are just bad players. But I've not found that to be the case at all. Uh, I think Sony players are great units for the price point. Uh, and I've had very few problems with my own X700 player. But the caveat here is that Sony players can be a little bit more high maintenance, for lack of a better term, uh, meaning that some of the functions are more manual and don't automatically switch or adapt to the type of disc being played. So if you use these settings here that I'm about to get into uh, for your Sony 4K players, I think you'll find that most of these skipping and freezing issues will go away, uh, at least those that are related to the player itself. And with that said, I'm going to get behind the camera here for a few minutes uh, so that we can actually take a look at these settings together firsthand. So let's do this. Okay, so here we are looking at the home screen of my Sony X700 4K player. Uh, I've got it hooked up to my computer monitor here for demonstration purposes. Now, if you have a Sony X800 4K player, I believe your interface looks a little bit different than this. It has a little bit different appearance. Uh, but rest assured, uh, the Sony X800 has all the same settings, same functionality uh, as my X700 here. So you should have no problem uh, inputting the settings that I'm about to show you here. And here is my trusty remote. Uh, for our purposes today, we're going to be using this directional pad here, the center button in the middle, and the return button uh, just below the directional pad. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to go into your player's setup, which is on the Sony X700. Uh, it's this little suitcase looking icon right here located in the upper right hand corner. It says setup. Uh, now, again, on the X800 units, I believe it looks a little bit different. I don't think this setup suitcase icon is in the upper right hand corner. I think it's like on one of these square blocks or something somewhere down here. But either way, you want to look for that little suitcase icon because that's what's going to get you into your player's settings. Uh, so you can tweak them. Okay, so using the directional pad on your uh, remote, your Sony remote, pressing up and to the right, you want to make sure that the setup is highlighted and then press the center button to open it. And then once you open the setup, it shows you what page you're on by in the upper left hand corner here. It says setup, there's your suitcase, um, and you have a whole bunch of different options here. What we want is screen settings. So you want to use the directional pad to scroll down to screen settings, click the center button to open screen settings, and everything we're gonna be doing is in screen settings at this point, okay? So we're of course now on the screen settings page. So what you wanna do is using the directional pad, scroll down to the 4K 
upscale setting. So the first key thing that you're going to want to do here is to make sure that that 4K upscaling is turned off at all times. This is one of the biggest culprits for freezing and skipping on these 4K players. Now, I'll admit my technical knowledge of the upscaling process is pretty limited. Uh, I just have a very basic layman's understanding of this. But essentially, the upscaling process involves adding pixels to the 1080p image to make it 4K. A standard 1080p Blu-ray has about 2 million pixels. Uh, when you're upscaling to 4K, the upscaling process creates and adds another 6 million pixels uh, to the 1080p source to make it 4K. The problem is, of course, that you don't have all the information on those pixels at the source because the source is not 4K and it has a lot fewer pixels. So the upscaling process tries to approximate and essentially guess what the missing pixels should look like based on the limited uh, 1080p source information that it does have. Now you may actually see this setting uh, still sitting on, uh, I believe the factory default, which is like auto one, right? If you're seeing like auto one or auto two, you do not want that. And I think that's confusing to a lot of people or it's misleading, I should say, because people assume that auto function means the 4K upscaling will just automatically come on and turn off whenever it needs to. I don't really know what's going on with this setting, but I do know you wanna keep it turned off at all times. And to do that, you just press the center button open it up and then toggle down with your directional down to the off, press the center button, and it is now selected as off, right? So you wanna keep that off at all times. Here's the thing, you definitely do not want 4K upscaling turned on when you're playing a 4K disc. And this auto setting uh, can cause glitches and inconsistencies in performance when playing a 4K disc because we don't need any additional uh, pixels inserted uh, for a 4K source, do we? And to take it a step further, uh, I would suggest you really shouldn't even use this upscaling function for Blu-rays, uh, 1080p Blu-rays, because from what I've seen, the upscaling in Sony 4K players kind of sucks. It just does not look that great. And I've seen numerous other people say the same thing in various social media groups, uh, that the Sony 4K upscaling capabilities are just notoriously not very good in these players. So I think you're gonna find that you're better off leaving this upscale setting turned off at all times and just letting your TV, uh, your 4K TV, handle the upscaling from Blu-ray to 4K. Your 1080p Blu-rays will still be upscaled to 4K if you turn this setting off. It just won't be the Sony player doing it. Instead, your 4K TV will just automatically upscale the image. Now, I have a 75-inch Samsung 4K panel, and I got to tell you, my Blu-rays look great when using the TV's upscaling. So you really just don't ever need uh, this upscale setting on on the Sony players for any reason. And I think that you will find that it will make your quality of life a lot better if you just leave it off at all times. The next setting we want to focus on is the cinema conversion mode. Uh, that is the other key tweak that you want to make here. Uh, and to get to that, it's also in screen settings here. You just uh, use your directional to scroll down even further. So we'll go down, go down. It's almost at the bottom, at the very bottom. Not, uh, there it is, right? right above pause mode, there it is. Cinema conversion mode. You wanna have this set to video. Uh, I believe the factory defaults, if I look at it, just again, cl uh, click the center button to open it. And I think this is what you usually see. You usually see it on auto, I think, straight out of the factory. But we don't want auto. Uh, we wanna put this on video and leave it on video at all times. And to be honest, I don't really understand what effect this setting has on the disc performance. I've just been told that this is the best setting to use to prevent problems and that this can be one of the other biggest culprits for freezes and skips on 4K discs. I've been in 4K and home theater groups on social media and this is what the recommendation has been for this attribute on these players in order to get the smoothest performance from the player. So I don't know a whole lot about this setting. I don't really fully understand what the whole cinema conversion mode actually does, but I've just been using this setting from early on with my Sony 4K player, and I almost never have a problem playing discs. Or if I do, it's because of some issue with the disc itself. 
So from my experience, my Sony 4K player has pretty much run like a dream for me over the last couple years. And I still recommend them to anyone who's looking for a decent player on a budget. So yes, the 4K upscale setting should be turned off and the cinema conversion mode should be set to video. Those are the two key tweaks that you wanna make. Uh, if you do this, I think you're gonna find you have a lot fewer problems with your player. Okay, so we've established that if you use these settings that I've just laid out here, I think you'll find your life gets a lot easier with the Sony players. And I've got a bit of an anecdotal uh, example here from my own life that I think kind of illustrates this whole situation. Uh, my dad uh, bought a Sony X800 4K player about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, and he bought it on my recommendation. Uh, I really liked my X700. I told him the X800 is a great unit. He went ahead and bought it. And when he first got the player, I helped him set it up. We used the same settings that I've just laid out here. Uh, and he didn't have any problems with the player for like a year and a half. The player has run like a dream for him. Up until recently, uh, he started having a few problems with a couple discs uh, freezing and skipping, um, including uh, at least one disc that he had previously played on his player without any problems. So that got me to thinking, that makes me wonder if maybe his settings had been somehow reverted back to the factory defaults. So we went in and checked his settings, and sure enough, that appears to be what had happened. Uh, both his 4K upscaling and cinema conversion mode were set to auto. That's what we don't want. <laughs> so we put them back to where they're supposed to be. We turned off the 4K upscaling. We set the cinema conversion mode to video, and he was good to go. And now he hasn't had a problem since. So I know some people have been a little skeptical of whether these settings will actually make a difference, but I would submit they do work. Uh, I haven't had any problems with my Sony X700. I've been using these settings for the last couple years. My dad, he has an X800. He hasn't had any problems using these settings over the last year and a half or two years. So um, yeah, I know those are just a couple personal examples, but I know there are a lot of other people I've talked to online in social media groups and whatever that they've had the same experience. They've said once they put these settings in, they stopped having problems with their Sony players. So they're great units. By the way, there is one other thing I wanted to address real quick because it comes up quite a bit when we're talking about 4K discs skipping and freezing. I know some people have suggested that the triple layer uh, BD100 4K disc uh, can sometimes have problems switching layers, switching to that third layer. But I can tell you, I've personally not found that to be the case, uh, at least not to any significant degree. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I had any problems playing a BD100 triple layer disc on my 4K player. They all play fine. So I suspect that, at least in some cases, uh, for those who have had problems playing uh, BD100 discs on their Sony 4K players, perhaps it has something to do with these settings I've been discussing, not really the BD100 disc itself. Now, I'm not ruling out that, that uh, the BD100 disc can maybe be problematic from time to time. I mean, I've said this before also in that previous video, uh, 4K is not a perfect technology. So, you know, there are going to be glitches and things that happen from time to time occasionally. But overall, I really haven't had very many problems playing triple layer BD100 discs on my 4K players, on any of my 4K players. So that about wraps it up for my little life hack here for Sony 4K players. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, do me a favor, if you like the content on this channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, also don't forget to like the videos as well. It really helps out with the, uh, the channel's visibility out there on YouTube. Also, don't forget to check out my previous Back to Basics video from a few months ago on why brand new 4K discs are freezing and skipping. Uh, there's a lot of good information in that video, and it really is meant to be taken hand in hand with this one. Uh, this video really is an extension of that video, so uh, check it out when you get a chance. Also, let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback on this. Let me know if you've tried these settings and if it's worked for you and, and whatnot. So I, I always love hearing from you guys. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.